This week on Outdoor Bound TV, we're off to the rolling hills of Glen Elder, Kansas for a spring conservation hunt for snow geese with Graham Grasseth and the boys from Maxed Out Guides. The snow geese are making their annual trek north back to the tundra of Canada where they will spend the summer months. Now Graham will give us some tips on how to effectively call and decoy in what is arguably one of the toughest goose species to hunt. Unbelievable. Look at that walleye. There we go. Right there. There we go. Pretty incredible. That's what I'm talking about. Very intense. Look at the size of that northern. Awesome, awesome. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Mission by Matthews and Vortex Optics. Mission Crossbow sets a new standard in crossbow design with the all new Sub 1. With over 26 revolutionary patents, including 80% let off Sync X cam system and CNC machined flight deck, the Sub 1 is the most accurate crossbow the world has ever seen. Featuring benchmark fire control, the Sub 1 is the first crossbow that allows you to safely decock with the push of a button unparalleled maneuverability, quality, and accuracy. The Sub-1 redefines the crossbow experience. refreshing lemon lime dew. Big Bear Down. Whether you're looking for a sweet recipe for bear bait or quality bear scents, we've got you covered. Big Bear Down offers all their bait selections by the bag, the barrel, or in bulk. From crushed sugar cones, trail mix, and granola to our syrups, frostings, and bait toppings, we've got the variety to keep the most cautious bears coming back again and again. Big Bear Down scents can be used as an attractant or cover scent and draws bears in from miles around. Look for Big Bear Down by our distributing at two convenient Wisconsin locations or at a retailer near you. Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm Kurt Walbeck. You know, the days are getting warmer, the snow's starting to disappear. I think spring might finally be here. This time of year also marks the re-emergence of the geese as they make their annual migration north back to Canada. On this week's show, we travel to the small town of Glen Elder, Kansas, about an hour south of Lincoln, Nebraska. Now, we're going to try to intercept this migration north for probably one of the toughest birds to hunt. Let's head to the fields before dawn to hunt the snow goose. Okay guys, uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, just a couple things here for the hunt. Um, you can see we've got birds sitting on the pond here behind us. A lot of the birds are going to be coming from the lake. They were in this field pretty thick last night. So as these birds work and we anticipate them coming back to feed here, for a couple of you we already talked about it, you've got those ghillie blankets right on top. What we want you to do is pull those blankets right up high, just come right underneath your chin. It's critical with these hunts. What we want, we want everybody's head down below the profile of the decoys. So as these birds work, a um, couple of different things, you know, we'll have the e-collars going. As these birds work, we gotta have everybody go radio silent. You know, guys get excited, they wanna talk back and forth. Well, the birds can hear the e-collars, they can also hear your voice. As the birds work and as they spin, everybody sits still. When it's go time, as the birds come on down, number one thing is we don't wanna have anybody take their gun off safe early. 
The only time on this hunt that your gun should ever be off safe is when that gun's on your shoulder, okay? I'll yell out, kill him, take him now, whatever it may be. If I haven't called it, don't sit up and start shooting. We might have some small batches that are coming in early, and we're trying to get that big batch behind them in front for everybody. So sit up, shoulder your gun, take your gun off safe. Any bird in your 10 to 2 zone, guys, is fair game, okay? Anything here and here that's fair game, those are your birds. The birds that come in on the right, the guys on the right will clean up on those. Birds that come in on the left, get away. Guys on the left will, will probably get away, yes, they'll, they'll all live. So lucky for them. Like I said, just don't fire down the line. Just make sure we have a good, safe hunt here this morning. When we're done, Sam and I will go get the birds. Just put your gun barrels. We'd like to have everybody put their gun barrels up. Put your guns back on safe. We'll get the birds, and hopefully we do that a whole bunch of times. Any questions? Okay. All right, let's do it. So we're here in central Kansas, uh, north central Kansas actually, we're about 40 miles off the Nebraska border. Um, Mid-March, it's been a unique year out here this year. The um, It's been a little colder this year, it's kind of kept the birds further south. The snows have really just been migrating back in here to the north over the last uh, 10 days or so. We've seen a lot of birds pushing north. A lot of the birds in the morning, they've been doing different things. They've been going from water to water and necessarily not feeding as hard. We're set up in a milo field here, actually. The wind's supposed to pick up a little bit, and when that happens, what, what these snows do is they usually crawl in real low across the top of the decoys, and um, uh, we like to try and keep those decoys up tight on those windy days. So when they, by the time they get up top to us and they crawl right in, uh, it's too late and it's hammer time for the guys. Uh, so for us in the spring, a typical decoy setup, um, you know, as far as we use a combination of, of uh, full body uh, snow goose decoys and then also socks. Um, we'll use these socks a lot right around the hide here and um, 
we use those to help. Uh, we basically sit on these backrests and the whites and we use these, uh, these ghillie blankets that we have. And uh, we use that to blend into this, basically a sea of these uh, white Tyvek decoys. And then, um, so we use those around where we hide, where we put all our clients. And then further out, we'll put the full bodies. And those are a more realistic decoy. We're putting those towards where we want the birds to finish. Those birds are typically gonna come in and swoop in downwind. So we put our most realistic decoys downwind and let those birds crawl up those, uh, those full body goose decoys towards the e-callers and the electronic calls that we get to play here in the spring. Um, flags are a big, uh, a big tool for us. We use them in about every set. And you know what a flag actually does, uh, this is, uh, you know what these flags do is these flags just, these are supposed to meant to look like wings and uh, they just mimic, they mimic a bird landing down into the spread. So what we try and do is we try not to use them when the birds are right on top of us. We like to, to hit those birds with what we call them the corners. So as those birds are coming around and maybe they're gonna, they're gonna make the edge and they're gonna go around to the outside, that's when we like to hit them with the flag just to give them a little movement. It's mimicking birds that are maybe picking up and sitting back down. It's a lot of realism. It's, it, birds see it a lot in the spread. Snows are a real active bird when they're sitting down. They'll pick up and sit down a lot. So those birds just help us give us, it's just another tool that we can use. What we try to do is just be natural and realistic and try and mimic, you know, as birds were to come into this field and set down, how, you know, 20, 50, 150, 200 snows would set down into a field and just try to mimic that, uh, that set with our spread. We like to leave a little bit of an opening out front for the, the birds to center up and for the clients to know where those birds are going to try and finish and kill them. And um, uh, that's been a real good recipe for success for us over the last few years. Get him! Safety's on. What's up? Come back. You have him circling, spinning still. But... Oh, yeah. We just sat at him too. Folks, I'm Graham Gressett with Maxed Out Guides. We're out here hunting snow geese in uh, north central Kansas right now. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with Outdoor Bound TV. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Amsoil Synthetic Lubricants and Mountain Dew. Excellent. Oh, there's a good one. Awesome. Beautiful fish. Look at how he ate that he too. He ate that Google Eye jig. This is the Google Eye. It's available in a live bait series and then a long hook shank series. And what we did is we took a glass rattle and built it into the middle of the round jig head and just bouncing it and hits the bottom, that glass rattle's rattling and it's sending off vibration in this dirty water in this river. And that's the result right there. This one's coming home with me. Handcrafted in the heart of Wisconsin since 1968, Golden Hawk canoes are inspired by the tradition of early wilderness explorers and modern day canoeing know-how. Customized to meet your exact needs with precision, uniformity, and strength. Our unique, full contour hull design contributes to stability, whether you're hunting, fishing, trapping, or just spending an afternoon on the water. Handcrafted fun and satisfaction for a lifetime. Golden Hawk Canoe. Rue Motors has been serving Central Wisconsin since 1947 and offers a full line of quality Kubota tractors, mowers, and RTVs. Let the knowledgeable staff at Rue Motors help you select the best Kubota RTV for you and your family. From weekend food plot maintenance to projects around your yard, you can count on Rue Motors for all your quality Kubota products at both convenient locations. Rue Motors, take the short drive up Highway 45 in Anigo and Burnhamwood.
We're out here in the middle of Kansas, in the middle of a Milo field, and we've got a big pile of snow geese right up to the north of us here, and they're feeding, they're all hungry, they're up in the food just north of us, and we're right in the middle of the migration. It's what you would call the reverse migration. It's the birds are actually coming from the south, and they're trying to make it back north, and we're trying to intercept them before they can get there and breed. So this feed is what they call it right now where they're all eating. It's a big feed is what you'd call it. Well, it's hard to compete with those live birds when you're sitting here and you've got silo socks with a mild wind. Uh, more movement in the spread, the better. So as the wind picks up, the birds might move a little bit better and our actual decoy spread is gonna have a little bit more life to it. So once those birds move on and get back to their loaf pond, which a loaf pond is where they sit during the day and just like it sounds, they actually loaf around and just wait for the afternoon feed. So once they pick up, move onward, these birds from the south that are coming back, migrating to the north, hopefully will come in here is what we're hoping for. Coming back, coming back. So when you see, you know, when, when you watch snow geese work a decoy spread, what you'll see a lot of times is you'll see a really smart, wary bird. Um, there's a reason these birds are so overpopulated is because they are a very educated bird. They're a hard bird to hunt. They're a hard bird to decoy. So you'll see them sit on top of this spread. And, you know, what we've got out here is we've got a thousand decoys out. Half of them are, you know, we've got five, six hundred full body HD high definition decoys. We're playing a, a, a recording of live snow geese that we're blasting into the air from an MP3 player through speakers. So it's about as real as you're gonna get. And st still, even with all that technology and all the things that we can do, you see these birds spin and circle and, and they can just, you know, there's a lot of times where they can tell with something just right, that something's just not right. So especially wind, wind's a big deal for snows, especially with these socks. Wind helps them just give us a little bit movement and add a little rip bit of realism to the spread. Um, so what we do, like uh, uh, P down there this weekend, he's been running the e-collar. As these birds work, you know, we usually start them off with a little bit lower volume. Um, and so as they work and, and if they show an interest, we're going to let those birds just come right in. The nice thing is when you start off with that volume low is that if those birds don't like that, maybe they're going to they're gonna scoot off. Then you can start to dial up that volume a little bit and you've got a little bit something that you can throw at them just to, to say, hey, we're still down here. You know, here's a little bit different. And some days you find those birds where they want that volume cranked all the way up. Sometimes they just want it at a whisper. And that's what takes an experienced guy to determine, you know, and figure out which day is what those birds want. Do they want it loud? Do they want it soft? Or what's it gonna be today?
Uh, there's a few different tools that we use beyond the e-collars and the flags. We also have, um, uh, you know, some some flapping wing decoys. It's similar to like a spinning wing decoy you see when duck with ducks. These are called a clone. Uh, they came out a few years ago, and it's a really lifelike. It's 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 about as real as you're going to see, and it mimics those birds again, kind of like a flag, just flapping down and sitting down into the spread. The nice thing with the clones are is where with a flag, I have to flag it and I have to kind of draw that attention to me. That's why we do it on the corners. Um, when those birds are a little further out with those clones, we can get those out in the decoy spread away from the hunters. And uh, uh, we have a remote that we can turn them on, on and off. So if the birds love it some days, we leave it on. Some days they don't like it as much, so we turn them off. But it allows us to give that realism a little bit further away from the hunters. And uh, it's the same thing with the rotary systems that we use. Um, the rotaries just help us, you know, add some life and add some movement to the spread. Creates a little bit of chaos, and when you see snow geese feeding in the field, the first thing that's going to come to mind is chaos because you just see huge amounts of birds flying all over the place. And it's way more than we can do with these few little tools that we have, but these things do help put birds right in, uh, right in the decoys for our customers. Get them! One of the things that's especially for a, for a hardcore waterfall guide, um, we're used to being able to use our goose and duck calls to manipulate those birds. And uh, that's probably the thing that I get the most pleasure out of is, is using, using my goose call to, to get those birds and bring those birds nice and tight in for our customers. And some days they want, you know, those birds really want it fast, they want it loud, sometimes it's soft and slow. You know, it just depends. Um, and uh, it, it is a little bit of a challenge when you roll into these uh, these spring hunts because you don't have that luxury of using your calls. Snow geese, there's just so many of them in the air, one person on a, on a call just isn't gonna do much. So there is some um, some skill though on working that e-caller and, and using the volume, using different tracks. We have different tracks for a feeder track. We have migrator tracks. Um, we have several different things that we can use to, to throw at those birds. And, and some days they're just snow geese. You know, some days they just win because they're tough birds to hunt. But there are days where we can figure out that right track that they want. They wanna hear that feeder call soft that day. Well, you know, that's just that just comes from the experience of a guy playing around on figuring out what those birds want and, and uh, making the changes. Get up. <laughs> this is probably the hardest hunt out of any waterfall hunt to do yourself. You know, you can go to Fleet Farm and pick up uh, a, a dozen duck decoys for, you know, uh, 20 bucks and be a duck hunter. Well, with snow geese, the spread that we're sitting in here today there's probably $10,000 worth of equipment that we're sitting in here, and this is just one of our spreads. We've got multiple spreads out here that guys are hunting in. You know, we've got uh, six, seven guys down here that are guiding this weekend. Half of them are in the field with their clients. The other half are out there on the road pounding the gravel. You know, our whole goal is we have kind of a machine that we've created, and we have guys that are, you know, that are out here trying to maximize the hunt for our customers today. And at the same time, we've got guys that are out on the road looking for tomorrow's hunt to make sure that our customers can stay on a good hunt the best that we can based on the conditions and based on what the birds are giving us on any given day. Anybody that wants to come out and do one of these hunts or a Minnesota hunt or a South Dakota hunt or ducks, you know, whatever you guys want to do, again, we hunt from September to April. You can go right on our website. It's uh, maxedoutguides.com or the easy way to remember it. We have a marketing URL, geesefearus.com. And uh, you can go right on our website. You can see pictures, rates. We have videos. Um, and uh, we try and provide as much information on that website as we can to let customers know that we're going to be a good fit for them and let them know that we're going to work hard for them uh, when they're on their hunt with us. So, uh, finished up at a pretty good night. We, uh, I think we shot about 25, 30 birds. Uh, we were hunting a pretty good feed that they were in yesterday. Um, a lot of the birds didn't come back, but that's pretty common with snow goose hunting. The ones that did would work up. The wind was a little goofy. It was kind of coming in off the northeast, but the birds were coming in off our back right. And uh, it's not quite the way that we wanted it, but uh, a lot of the birds would finish right up top here. The guys, we'd call the shot. The guys sit up and it's hammer time, and uh, we had a nice little pile. <laughs> Good job, fellas.
Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by the W.C. Russell Moccasin Company and Nays Bates. Jensen & Son Asphalt Paving and Maintenance, your number one source for professional paving and driveway sealing in North Central Wisconsin. Jensen & Son is a local, family-owned and operated business. We have all the resources to get the job done right. No project is too big or too small, and we strive to exceed your expectations on time, every time. For affordable pricing and high-quality workmanship, call us today for a free estimate. Jensen & Son Asphalt Paving and Maintenance, we top them all. What we chase cannot simply be caught. And what propels us takes far more than fuel. The distance we go is never measured in miles. And we find there's always more at the end of the line. Your moment is out there. Find it. Since 1957, Meyer Buildings has offered full design and project management for your farm, equestrian, commercial, and storage building needs. Our recreational building line specializes in the design and construction of affordable, remote area buildings for the outdoorsman. Whether it's a hunting cabin, lake home, workshop, or commercial facility, Meyer Buildings will design and build a building that is uniquely tailored to your needs. My name is Jeff Meyer from Meyer Recreational Buildings. Call us today for a better way to build. We handle your races, your jumps, and your trails. Isn't it time you give your daily driver the same love? Amsoil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil delivers 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by leading industry standards. And now, ordering Amsoil is even easier. Simply log on to qcamsoil.myamsoil.com and have quality Amsoil products delivered right to your door. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Brewpub Pizza and Kalen's Fishing Baits. <laughs> There's nothing quite like watching the sunrise over the rolling hills of Kansas and listening to hundreds if not thousands of snow geese circling overhead. I think you can see pretty quickly why snow goose hunting is so much fun. If you're interested in hunting with the guys from Maxed Out Guides, from Kansas all the way to their home state of Minnesota, all of their information is right here on the screen. And we hope that you'll join us again here next week when we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around the U.S., around Canada, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. Folks, I'm Graham from Maxed Out Guides. We're gonna be right back here for God damn it, Kurt, you do this to me every time I gotta do this one. <laughs> Die, kills me with this one. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, okay, hold on. I have, yep, I, many, many times. I actually, this is the thing I practice the most when you come home. Folks, I'm Graham Gressa with Max Stout Guides. We're gonna be right back here in the, ah. oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta keep the F-bombs out of them next time. Mm -hmm.